friends we are going to see in the further slides that how we can use the vibration analysis for finding out the machine problems now we are going to see which parameter should we use while measuring the vibration whether it would be the velocity whether it would be the acceleration or whether it would be the displacement greater the vibration amplitude correspond to the higher levels of machinery defects vibration amplitude can either be displacement velocity or acceleration now we have to see which parameter we are going to select for taking the vibration the motion below 10 hertz produce the very little vibration in terms of acceleration moderate vibrations in terms of velocity and relatively large vibration in terms of displacement so we are going to use displacement as a parameter in the motion below 10 hertz the case where there is a high frequency range the acceleration values yield more significant values than velocity or displacement hence for the frequency over 1000 hertz or 1500 hertz the preferred measurement unit for the vibration is acceleration generally in the case of uh, in uh, that is between 10 hertz to 1000 hertz the velocity gives a good indication of the severity of vibration the majority of the general rotating machineries operate between 10 to 1000 hertz range so velocity is the most common vibration measurement and analysis tool before going further let us discuss some fundamentals of the vibrations first one is the amplitude what is amplitude the height of a wave crust above the reference line is called the amplitude of the wave and what is the reference line it is the line of zero displacement and the second one is the frequency what is frequency it is the cycle per second so friends uh, these are the some uh, basic fundamentals for studying further the vibration and know about the uh, vibration analysis as we see the top of the wave is the crest and the bottom is the trough let us discuss the most important part of this topic fourier analysis or we call it uh, as a spectrum analysis also this would help us to know which part of the machinery is the troublesome fourier analysis is the another term for the transformation of a time waveform into a spectrum of amplitude versus frequency values it is also uh, known as a spectrum analysis and it can be done with a fast fourier transform analyzer so the next question is which iso standard should we follow to find out the vibration severity of the machinery so here we are using iso 2372 that is bs4675 as we see that the machine is classified into four classes class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 class 1 is for the small machine class 2 for the medium machines class 3 for the uh, large rated uh, foundation class 4 for the large soft foundation we can refer this table while taking the vibrations now let us know what is class 1 class 2 class 3 and class 4 in iso 2372 class 1 are the machineries or the individual parts of engine and machine integrally connected with a complete machine in its normal operating condition production electric motors of up to 50 kilowatt are typical example of machinery in this category the medium sized machine typically electrical motors with 15 to 75 kilowatt output without special foundation rigidly mounted engines or machines up to 300 kilowatt on special foundations these are the class 2 class 3 large prime movers 
and other large machines with rotating mass mounted on a rigid and heavy foundations which are relatively stiff in the direction of vibration. Class 4 Large Prime Movers and other large machines with their rotating masses mounted on foundations which are relatively soft in the direction of vibration for example turbo generator there are various machine fault which could be diagnosed by using the vibration analysis some of them are unbalancing of shaft the uh, shaft band eccentricity misalignment looseness belt drive problems, gear defects, bearing defects, cavitation, shaft crack. So today we are going to discuss only four of them. These are unbalance, uh, bent in shaft, misalignment and looseness. Now we are going to discuss the state of unbalance. The international standard organization defined unbalance as that condition which exists in a rotor when vibratory force or motion is imparted to its bearing as a result of centrifugal forces. The uneven distribution of mass about a rotor's rotating center line. The two new terminologies were also used. The rotating center line and the other one is the geometric center line. In the rotating center line is defined as the axis about which the rotor would rotate if not constrained by its bearing. The geometric center line is the physical center line of the rotor. When the two center lines are coincident, then the rotor will be in the state of balance. When they are apart, the rotor will be unbalanced. There are three types of unbalance that can be encountered on machine. These are static unbalance, couple unbalance and dynamic unbalance. For all type of unbalance, the spectrum analysis will show a predominant 1 into rpm frequency of vibration. The vibration amplitude at the 1 into rpm frequency will vary proportional to the square of the rotational speed. It is always present and normally dominates the vibration spectrum. Now the uh, couple unbalance. In this case the spectrum analysis again displays a single 1 into rpm frequency peak. The amplitude at the 1 into varies proportional to the square of the speed. This defect may cause high axial and radial vibration. In case of overhung rotors, the spectrum analysis displays a single 1 into rpm peak as well and the amplitude again varies proportional to the square of the shaft speed. It may cause high axial and radial vibrations. Now the case is there is a bent in the shaft. When the shaft bent is encountered, the vibration in the radial as well as in the axial direction will be high. The axial vibration may be higher than the radial vibrations. The spectrum analysis will normally have one x and 2x component if the amplitude of 1 into x rpm is dominant then the bend is near the shaft center the amplitude of 2 into x rpm is dominant then the bend is near the shaft end now we are going to discuss the misalignment case here the high vibration are due to misalignment. There are basically two types of misalignment, angular misalignment and the parallel misalignment. In case of angular misalignment, the shaft center line of the two shafts meets at angle with each other. In the parallel misalignment, the shaft center line of the two machines is parallel to each other and have an offset. The angular misalignment primarily subjects the driver and the driven machine shafts to excel vibration at the 1 into rpm frequency. The misalignment rarely seen just as 1 into rpm peak. Typically there will be high axial vibration with both 1x and 2x rpm. However, it is not usual for 1x, 2x or 3x to dominate. These symptoms may also indicate the coupling problem as well. There may be a looseness. Then the case of parallel misalignment. The parallel misalignment has similar 
vibration uh, symptoms compared to the angular misalignment but it shows high radial vibration we will see both 1x and 2x peaks when the pedal misalignment is predominant the 2 into x is often larger than 1x but its amplitude relative to 1x may often be dictated by the coupling type and its construction when either angular or parallel misalignment becomes severe it can generate high amplitude peaks at much higher harmonics 3x to 8x or even a whole series of high frequency harmonics the coupling construction will often significantly influence the shape of spectrum if the misalignment is severe now uh, by studying the spectrum analysis uh, how we will uh, understand that it is a misalignment of bent shaft often a bent shaft and dominant angular misalignment gives similar spectrum analysis the vibration are visible in both axial and radial vibrations so it is only with the phase analysis that these problems can be resolved further in a machine with a bent shaft a phase difference will be noticed on two bearings of the same shaft in the case of misalignment the phase difference is visible on the bearing across the coupling so in our next video we are going to discuss about this phase difference also as we discuss in the uh, previous slide here is the angular misalignment as we discuss in the previous slide this one is the parallel misalignment now we are going to study the case of mechanical looseness the mechanical looseness can occur at three locations that is internal assembly looseness looseness at the machine to base plate interference and the structural looseness the category of looseness could be between a bearing liner in its cap a sleeve or rolling element bearing or an impeller on a shaft it is normally caused by improper fit between component parts which will produce many harmonics in spectrum analysis due to non linear response of the loose parts to the exciting forces from the rotor the looseness will often cause sub harmonic multiples at exactly 1/2 or 1/3 into rpm that is 1/2 x or 1 and 1/2 and 2/2 and further so this is the uh, internal looseness in the machine then the uh, looseness between the machine to base plate the problem is associated with the loose pillow block bolts cracks in the frame structure or the bearing pedestal make it evident how high harmonics are generated due to the rocking motion of the pillow block with loose bolts now the uh, case of structural looseness this type of looseness is caused by structural looseness or the weakness in the machine feet base plate or foundation it can also be caused by deteriorated grouting loose hold down bolts at the base and the deterioration of the base frame or base known as soft foot friends we have discussed some of the basics of the spectrum analysis in our next part we are going to discuss the phase analysis also and uh, we would move further i would like to see the comment from all of you and this is a part of discussion and if someone has to uh, some information to be shared please uh, get it shared in the comment and thank you for the watching with the video thank you